Well, we are getting started on our paratrooper kit from Glencoe Models. And let's see here. It is, it is, it is, it is. Tuesday, March 12th. That's the day we're starting on here. Um, been doing a lot of glue ups. Uh, of course, we don't have instructions for this kit. And I did find a Facebook group for Glencoe Models. Um, and I posted a picture of the kit on there and said that I was wanting to do do this but I didn't have any instructions and a couple of guys uh, both sent me over private messenger and also posted on the uh, on my post some pictures of the um, of the instructions so thank you very much so another situation of a modeling community is is so much so cool even though they're not Facebook or I mean, not, excuse me YouTube guys um, they're, they're just awesome chaps so um, modelers the world round are just awesome people i think so uh where are we at so we've been uh cleaning up seams and um gluing up stuff this is there's a heavy seam all the way around here and of course i'm used to doing cars or sci-fi or whatever so you're gonna have nice flat you know flat seams so everything's gonna be nice and flat but this is all wiggly and jagged and uh doing our best to clean up what we can so that there's a better fitment and we're doing pretty well um this particular plastic is taking the tamiya uh, ex, uh extra thin there it's taking the tamiya stuff really really nicely so that's good i was a little worried that this plastic might ignore it or whatever so you never know with an older kit so uh this is definitely an old mold uh so there's a little bit of inaccuracies accuracies and a little bit of fitment issues and such uh i saw i went on ebay looking for instructions to see if somebody had instructions for sale Saw a lot of kits that were open, um, and none of them were built, of course. But uh, there was some kits that were in a lot worse shape than this, with with flash and other and other bits. Uh, but this, I feel pretty lucky that we got uh, got away with just missing instructions on this one. So uh, clamped in some stuff. I got let's see, I've got arms clamped. I've got torsos clamped. I've got hands clamped. Got uh, got legs clamped. Uh, this poor guy. Didn't listen to his buddies and went into, I guess he went into the village and got himself a bad case of the clamps. So uh, we're going to see what we can do with that and help him out. The instructions have been extremely helpful, uh, but there is a couple of little inaccuracies. This is an older kit. Um, it's not highly accurate at all. So we do have the entrenching tool. We do have, I'm not even sure what what that would be, but that, that goes on his belt also. Um, let's see here. You got these little, I suspect they're ammo packs, perhaps. I'm not quite sure. And the, got those there. And then this, this really good looking, uh, pistol in a case that in the, in a holster, I should say, that looks great. I really like how the U S stands out on that. And there's a canteen floating around here someplace. Where's your canteen? I guess he used it already. Oh, here it is. It's upside down. I think that, uh, that looks really good too. It's got the snaps on there. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of large, so the detail comes through pretty well. Um, but where they go on his person is a little bit up for debate. So there, you know, it shows you the entrenching tool stuck on the side. Well, most pictures I've seen for reference of uh, a paratroopers from that era, the entrenching tool is actually on the other side. I don't know if that was a personal point of preference for the, uh, for the troopers or not. Uh, but it looks like we're going to have to make up a little bit while we're, where we're going. Like, um, you imagine he's going to be right-handed, so he's going to have his uh, his pistol on his right side because it's holstered for, for a right-handed person, unless he's doing a cross draw, which would be silly, I guess. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> I've never had to draw a pistol in heat before, so, uh, uh, yeah, in the heat of the moment. So, um, yeah, so who knows? If you guys know, let me know. I, I would appreciate that greatly. There, there are a couple things like this. This piece here does have this nice big giant lug on it, so it's going to obviously go right there, and uh, so and it fits on there really good. And then like the canteen, according to the instructions, the canteen actually is going to fit right in here, like that sort of. It does fit fairly well, so we're getting it figured out. Um, the only question we had was the actual uh, straps. These guys here. Um, you see how they're coming. This, this, this box art is not accurate to the model at all. 
because uh, <laughs> his arm is not up like this. It's actually down holding his, uh, holding his weapon. Um, that's just, it, you know, artistic license, I guess is what they call it. So, or as, as a model, as we model builders say, it is what it is, which I think is code for meh. <laughs> I got more important things to worry about. So, uh, we have several of these pieces for the, uh, for the rigging, all different bent up pieces and stuff. Uh, the only thing I've discovered, uh, the instructions have the part numbers and everything, but these didn't have the part numbers on them. So, because I guess there's like a little tab or something that's supposed to have the part number on there. So the part didn't have the part numbers, so I'm trying to make it up. The only thing that I found for 100% certain is this guy, which looks like he matches up right there. And then the hand is supposed to hold this piece here, and then another piece is supposed to come off of that, I guess, sort of like this. In that fashion, his hand will be holding it in the in that in that crooked piece there. But then there's also pieces that are supposed to come off the back side here. I guess I'm not 100 sure. So doing some experimentations. I have yet to see pictures of an actual built model. Uh, everything I've seen is just somebody selling stuff. So uh, that's unfortunate. So I don't know. I, I don't. I I can't possibly be the first one to ever actually build one of these. But uh, you know, it is what it is. So there we go. We're going to keep on with cleaning up parts and fitting parts and making sure we got stuff figured out. Now, a couple guys had commented in the uh, last video that um, the screaming face guy would be the would be a good one for the uh, for this particular model. Um, and I, I don't discount that that this is a newer piece that was added for the Desert Storm, I think from 1991, 1990, something like that. Uh, so there was some newer stuff out of here. So like the the Screaming Face, uh, the Modern Helmet, or at that time the Modern Helmet, the M203, and um, I think I think that was it. I think the, 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 there might be a couple other pieces that might have been added. Uh, maybe these guys, I don't know. So um, I can't remember cor correctly. But uh, we're going to discount those, set those to the side. We're going with the original bucket. And then we're going to go with the, uh, this is obviously the original sculpted face for the kit. There's something about this guy. He's just such a, I don't know, just such a World War II GI. I mean, he looks like he's right out of one of the old uh, Stars and Stripes comics. And um, I tell you why. I tell you why I want to go with this face. Just in case building this guy doesn't go to plan. Well, I mean, building is going to be fine. I mean, it's gluing stuff together. But, I mean, painting. If the painting doesn't go to plan and I, I mess it up pretty badly, there's an option we can go with. And since he has this kind of cool little stand here, and um, the there's an emblem with the wings. Here it is. Right here. This here. Which should probably go on the stand someplace. I don't know if... Uh, that's going to go someplace but um but i mean that, that could go down there pretty nicely so i'm waffling i'm sorry but it if it turns out we don't do a very good job painting this guy and we do him a disservice with our with our painting skills blue <laughs> blue painting skills we can always turn him into a bronze statue and i figure this guy has the perfect the perfect likeness for um, a bronze statue that would have been like in in the town square of a of a small town that was uh, honoring honoring their their fellows who'd gone off to World War, to serve in World War II and then uh, the paratroopers, so or the hundred first. So um, yeah, so that's 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 the backup plan. So I think this guy has the best looking likeness for that type of thing. Um, so yeah, so that's where we're at. We're going to go ahead and move on and get on with other things here. And we'll talk to you a little bit when we have more to show. Well, welcome to Wednesday. Um, been doing a lot of stuff around the house, but we finally got some bench time here in the evening. Still working on our paratrooper, of course. And uh, got this arm glued on here nice and solid. There's not a lot of mounting space, uh, um, surfaces, I should say. Not, not a lot of mounting surfaces, the, the way these are designed. There's just a few spots here and there where they kind of touch. I've done the best for cleaning all this up and uh, getting the best fit I can, but there's still some big gappage, so we're going to zoom in here. Yow! There's a lot of gappage in there, and uh, we used uh, some half millimeter uh, styrene, this stuff here. 
Polystyrene, uh, let's see, number 218, let's say 0.020 rod or half millimeter. This stuff is awesome because it is, um, you, I actually need tweezers to pick this up off the desk. It is tiny, 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 tiny. And uh, it seems like this particular version of this stuff um, takes cement really well. So we're using uh, this guy here, extra thin, and that stuff melts this uh, styrene perfectly so we can get that mushed into all the joints really really nice you see how flexible it's been on there for about 20 minutes so we can go back in there and mush that in almost like it's a like like we're making a sprue glue, sprue glue right there in the spot gotta tack that in there a little bit a little bit more uh, but yeah that's that's doing pretty well go around the back side here so it's filling the gap pretty nicely we might have to do a little bit of putty work right here. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but uh, so far, that's going good. We got the uh, the other arm glued on there. That one fit a lot better. Uh, still going to probably have to fill in some seams right through here. Uh, this up here is not horrible, but I'll probably fill it just to you know put it you know just trace it through there just the same. That that's a little large right there. Uh, with the legs, let's pull back again. There we go. With the legs, you've got the boots on. We spent all evening last night actually just sanding and filing, cleaning up the seams. I'm sorry, we're zooming in again, guys. That's a little much. I apologize. There we go. So there was a seam, um, yeah, right down the inseam here and right down the outside. That cleaned up really, really well. I really thought that looked great. Uh, probably a little bit of a, a cleanup job we're going to have to do right in here. Nope, actually, that's just a shadow. Okay, cool. I thought that might have been a hole. Just a little bit of a shadow there. And then uh, we have the, the feet glued together and then uh, cleaned up. And now we just shoved that in there and put some cement on there. So you can see there's some gappage going on all around there. So we'll, we'll see if we can fill that also. Uh, I, I, I presume that if we do the fill work like we do it with the styrene rod, it'll strengthen the joint as much as I can possibly do so. We're not using any super glue on this. We're using all, all uh, cement and um, styrene rod to fill in all the little gaps and stuff because it's going to sand a heck of a lot easier. We had to fill in <laughs> the trigger guard here, had a big gap through there, so we put some rod in there also. So we don't want anything leaking out of that grease gun. So there's that. And then let's see, he got his, got his head put together. That's a palooka, isn't it? Yeah, Sergeant Palooka. And then uh, let's see here, everything else is over here on the, on the side. We're going to rotate. All this stuff here is all cleaned up, ready to go. Um, like I said before, the kit is probably very inaccurate on certain aspects. So uh, we're just kind of getting a generalization of where stuff's supposed to go. We do know the canteen's going there, of course, the uh, the, um, oh, the emergency parachute. I don't know what to call it there. But the emergency parachute is going to go in the front there. And then it's looking like because of how these little packs here are kind of curved, um, I'm going to mount those up here because it's like this piece is supposed to go someplace, but it doesn't. So I thought, well, I'll hide that with, with that pack right there. Um, they don't really get in the way of the actual emergency parachutes or, or rescue parachute. So that's cool. And then this side over here actually has, um, hey, where did it go? Yeah, it's around here someplace. Actually has a piece that comes from here all the way down and matches up to that. So that's great. Uh, but we're looking forward to getting on to, to uh, painting this guy. So we're, you know, doing our best to get the basics covered. And then we'll move on from there. But that's going to be it now. We're going to go have ourselves a cookie. All right, y'all. Take it easy. And we'll talk to you when we have a little bit more to share. Hey, welcome back to day three, where it is now Thursday. Um, taking some, some time away from other activities to get some bench work done. And glorious product placement here. We're using our Tac Life. Um, mini tool and this this thing fits my big old meat hook just fine it even has a couple of indentations here for for our pities um, nicely it can hold it like a nice pencil or something like that and I've been using this with this grinder bit on here uh, to actually take down a lot of the little uh, styrene welding we had done all through That was awesome. Uh, Mrs. BG always picks just the right time to call. 
So, where were we? Oh yes, we're talking about our weld seams. Weld seams. Uh, so we did this styrene rod all through, all through the pits, around the shoulder, and it's you know pretty noticeable that there's something stuffed in there. Um, gosh, you know what? If, if if we were doing sailing ships, wouldn't they call that like chinking or something like that? Um, but uh, well, there's a plant. So this side here, you see, is a little better. It's a little bit blended better. And that's because we use, we're using that bit, and I've, I've just now switched to this little ball type bit here so we can get in there and just kind of get into that hollow a little better like that. No, it's not that quiet. <laughs> I don't have it turned on. It, this isn't very loud. Um, matter of fact, it's just loud enough, enough to drown out the Hallmark Channel stuff that's going on in, in the room next door, typically. Uh, so yeah, we're going to just give that all a nice cut down all that stuff i like the pointed one for getting into all the little crooks and grannies that are all through the area there so we've got these guys uh um glued up and filled and then we're just cutting it back and then we're going to go and uh, do this around his wrist here i'm thinking that most of the pictures i've seen uh, of paratroopers they have gloves on so i think we're going to paint the hands to look like gloves um hopefully Fingers gloved, gloved fingers crossed. Here is the left leg. Um, we did have to do a little bit of fill work right in here. I had to actually take it to look at it. You can see the, well, there's the white pieces blended right in there. Nice. Yeah, this stuff makes me look like, a, like I know what I'm doing. So uh, we'll go around and blend in a little bit around um, the boot top there. I, I actually had, for a, a fleeting moment, I had the notion of sanding off all of this lace detail. It's not very well depicted. Sanding all this lace detail off, drilling holes, and then using this uh, 0 0.02 styrene rod to make laces. And then I slapped myself and woke up, and I was like, "That's you're crazy, man. You're crazy. So um, <laughs> maybe, maybe someday in the future. I don't know. But uh, here's the left leg. Uh, we got that filled in around the boot top also, and just the smooth tread boots. I, I should put hobnails in there or something, you know. Uh, but um, let's see here. Yeah, so I think there was a little bit of fill. I, you know what? I can't even see it on here. Oh, to quote the movie star, uh, Christine, I'll be damned if I can't find the fill. There it is, right, right there. There's a, a little bit of a difference in color right there, and we have to do a little bit on the bottom of his uh, leg pouch right there too. So blending in really really nicely i'm really glad to see that the that the styrene is playing nicely with the with the model model kit styrene uh there's only one um area that's going to be of major concern and that's uh sergeant palooka's face here uh, that's on the floor just a second well <laughs> sergeant palooka doesn't like being called that he lost his head so it doesn't fit in there awesomely i'm gonna have to fill that also there's a couple of good spots where we can attach to tack it in place and then go back and fill in. And then I, uh, my, my plan is to just fill that in as best I can and then we'll, we'll grind it down as best we can. So there we go. And I'll probably end up painting the head in place. Um, Kenny over at, um, gosh, uh, Hobby Link International, I've been watching him do his uh, Green Lantern build, which has kind of like inspired me to go and tackle this dude but uh i you know he 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 does all that really cool masking and stuff with some of the liquid masking agents and, and, and junk and i thought yep that might be a good way to do this too so i'm pretty sure we're going to be priming this guy all in black any so there's that um everything else is still just sort of laid out on the mat here so i can keep track of it all but yeah basically it's just filling filling gaps and seams and then uh going back and taking care of the fill material so there we have it and we'll be back when we have some more or the battery runs out on this guy oh one last bit of information yeah it does come with a chin strap when i was originally looking at the parts i was like no way this actually comes with a um an optional beard a la G.I. Joe style. So I was trying to fit it on. I'm like, that doesn't fit for for crap. Oh, oh wait, that's the chin strap. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that shows what I know. All right, so we'll be back when we have more. Okay, so we are on Saturday. Uh, this will be the last segment for this video because it's just getting a little long. But uh, yeah, so 
paratrooper guy here all glued together into one happy piece got all both hands on got both legs on i just glued these on a few hours ago uh, i was on the phone with my buddy chuck from chuck's chuck's hobby spot and uh chatting away and decided well I'll go ahead and glue these guys legs on um so we're waiting for this to set up a little bit because a um, little bit of advice if you want to try using this technique where you use uh, some super thin uh, styrene glue or cement and you want to use that super thin uh, styrene rod the, the uh, 0.02 rod and you want to start putting that through the joints and stuff like I'm doing here or whatever build you're doing uh, make sure that the glue joint that you're working with has been cured up for at least overnight uh, I say that because you're going to be putting a lot of uh, cement into these into these joints, and that's going to reactivate whatever's been glued together, and you could end up actually causing yourself a mischief because um, if, if th this has only been a few hours. So if I start putting some more cement in there, that's going to loosen this up, and the leg will fall off. So we don't want that. We we want to keep our guy in one piece. So uh, we're going to let him sit overnight, and then we're going to come back and start putting in the uh, styrene rod through all the joints around the hips. We got them to match up as best as we can. Uh, still a little bit of a gappage here and there, but um, I think the rod will cover it. We did do our best on that. We did do an excellent job with um, with with this with this right hand. We got that uh, almost perfect with the join there. So we might not need to do too much rod on there. Maybe just a little bit on the backside there. But uh, very really happy with how he's looking. Oh, and we got the head placed too, and we we did, had to do a lot of sanding around the collar, and uh, so that would sit down on there really well and kind of tip forward a little bit. Uh, now we're kind of like, since he's all in one piece, we're just sort of looking at the base here, and according to the instructions that I've seen, uh, it, they want you to mount the uh, the right right left foot. Uh, <laughs> left foot forward here. I uh, want, want you to mount him on the base like that, so... And it's kind of formed that way. Let's put them on the base. Put the toesies in the holesies. And now look at the posies in. And this is, you know, th there's not much fudge factor on how, how to get everything lined up and everything. So he's looking at the ground, um, which is probably something a paratrooper would do when landing. He's going to be watching where to put that other foot and making sure he's not landing in a gopher hole or something like that. So uh, end his trip real soon. So... Um, yeah, I don't like that pose, though. I, I want to be able to see his face a little bit better. I don't want to have to have this on the highest shelf in the house so I can see his face. So I'm thinking about rotating this around 180 degrees and putting his his uh, his left footsie in there. I like that a lot better. It seems a little more balanced, uh, coming in coming in hot, you know, touching down on just one foot. The other one's going to skip out a little bit. Maybe he's coming a little too fast. But I do like... I do like this this way it sits on the base a little better than the way they, they suggest it to be. Also, that gives us a nice field area here so that we can paint up uh, the wings and set those down here too. Let's get this there. There we go. So we can drill a hole, mount this on there, all painted up and everything. So that looks pretty cool. Uh, so I really like I really like that idea. Of course, if we go go with this as a bronze, it probably will actually drill a hole in the bottom of his foot and in here, and put a rod through there so that uh, a metal rod so that he um, he actually holds his. He doesn't just you know fall over over time or or break off or something like that because that is a very small contact patch for a lot of because uh, there's still more stuff to put on this guy. So there's a lot of weight going to be up, a lot of mass, and this is a very small contact patch for that. So. I'm thinking that we probably will we'll do a whole, maybe even some epoxy. Uh, I think I have some of that buried around here someplace, but we'll do the epoxy deal. But uh, the joints uh, that we've been working with the uh, with that little motorized tool have been really coming along nicely. Yeah, white on this cream color just doesn't really show up well on the camera. I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, I'm really looking forward to getting a, a first couple of coats of primer on here and seeing how we did. Because that's going to let us know. It's the little sister. It's going to rat us out on how well we did. Or how well we didn't. But uh, there we go. So there's that. Got a little tin of, of uh, secrets, or as I call secrets. And uh, all these parts in here have been cleaned up and are ready to be installed. All we have to do is install them. So those are going to get primed up. Some of them will actually be attached and then and then go through the priming process with them, like the canteen and, and a couple other things. 
the the, uh, the parachute bundle in the front that's going to go on a little bit later since it's only got a couple of small attachment points we don't and we want to be able to paint behind it because you're going to have some sight lines uh, we did take a chunk of styrene it was just out of my off cut bin uh, a chunk of styrene uh, square rod stuffed it uh, made the hole just a little bit larger stuffed that piece of square rod in there glued it in place with a lot of cement and then we're going to come back and sand that a little bit more contourly to the rest of the uh, parachute pack so that it looks like it's supposed to be there because the hole was really large for the uh, for the handle for the for that parachute yeah the ripcord handle and um I thought, yeah, we should probably shrink that hole just a little bit. So I found that that piece in the offcut bin. And um, another little tip. Let's see here. Where is the offcut bin? There it is. I like to keep just a little thing of, of scraps of styrene and stuff. Uh, oh, look, a helmet. <laughs> a little small. Uh, but I like to keep scraps of styrene on hand. Very, very handy to have when uh, doing something like this. I need. Oh, I need a piece of uh, square tubing to fit in there. Boop, there it is. There you go. So there's that. That's a tip top tip for this video. But uh, yeah, I didn't get much done yesterday on the working on the seams and stuff because Mrs. BG stayed home. Uh, she'd already made all the hours she needed to do for the week. So she stayed home and we had a great time going around doing things, running errands and uh, just spending some uh, spending some quality time together. So other than also we had to do the, uh, the podcast with the guys. So that was a lot of fun. But yeah, so now we're just kind of getting on getting on with the getting on here on our paratrooper guys so thanks for tuning in if you made it this far in the video thank you very much appreciate that greatly and of course that means it's cookie time i'm thinking chocolate chip so we'll talk to you a little bit later on uh look forward to more videos and we got a stash yet we gotta do too so maybe we'll get that done this weekend we'll see well take it easy we'll see you in the next one bye now